great. I really think it's wonderful. This is all uh, a drive run for the folks visit, you know. I'm really glad I chose to come to King's. It, 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 it's a very proud moment for me as a graduate. Said, anybody that's going to stay in this area for the president's safety and ours, we're going to check for weapons. Just run this metal detector over you, okay? Any problems with that? Problems opening up the bag for me. Okay. I just want to take a quick peek. Okay. That's a dangerous banana. Okay. You push it on my pants. Stop it, stop it. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh, my guy, okay, who's, uh, who's next? Yeah, no, we got it. on. Okay. 
bag. Huh? Somebody dropped that bag, I guess. I don't know. Oh, they just dropped it. Left it there? No he threw idea. the bag Let's down, go. and then he started running. He went over here, then he walked back. Who? Oh, the same guy he has a bag? Yeah, the guy with the green coat there. Sir, Sir stay right there. Don't go any further. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, accompanied by Congressman Ken Jorsky, the President of King's College, Reverend James Lankenmeyer, and the Student Government President, Patrick Murphy. Fifty years ago, in 1946, ten Holy Cross priests and two laymen came from the University of Notre Dame to found a college for the sons of the working poor, most of them GIs, returning from service in the Second World War. Now 2,400 students, 300 faculty and stack, staff, 14,000 alumni, and thousands of friends and supporters are celebrating the experience of 50 years of educational service and commitment to this community. You are the first of many visitors who will come to King's during this Jubilee year, and you are very welcome. <laughs> Mr. President, one of your themes for young people is service. With us today are four AmeriCorps volunteers who are asked to stand. They are 1995 graduates of the University of Portland in Oregon, and the University of Notre Dame, both sister schools to King's College. Uh, these Holy Cross associates are working with poor clients at the St. Vincent de Paul Kitchen, the Commission on Economic Opportunity, the Human Services Associates, and Legal Services of Northeastern Pennsylvania. And we salute them. Another of your concerns for young Americans and some not so young is affordability of higher education. 
Of 1,800 full-time students at King's, nearly 1,400 are recipients of federal aid. This year, these 1,400 students have, have been awarded a total of one and a quarter million dollars in federal grants, but even more striking, however, is that these same 1,400 students have Stafford and Perkin loans totaling six million dollars in, 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 in loans. The same is true for students of our other private four-year colleges in this area, College of Misericordia and Wilkes University, whose presidents are here with us. We appreciate your efforts to preserve the guaranteed student loan program, the direct loan pro uh, lending program, and even more, your commitment to the Pell Grant program. <laughs> Mr. President, in your State of the Union address just a few weeks ago, you challenged Americans to pursue ambitious social and moral goals. You concluded saying, bound by a faith more powerful than any doctrines that divide us, by our belief in progress, our love of liberty, and our relentless search for common ground, America has always sought and risen to the challenge. Mr. President, you come to a community that rises to challenges that come our way, economic challenges, social and cultural challenges, educational challenges, and even the challenge of natural disaster. The citizens of this community and the students of this college will rise to the challenges you laid out in your address. Mr. President, welcome to the Wyoming Valley, to the city of Wilkesboro, and to King's College. It is my great pleasure to welcome President Bill Clinton, Congressman Paul Kondorsky, Mayor Tom McGrory, and other distinguished guests. It is my great honor to stand before these people who continually embody the compassion, courage, and vision it takes to lead this city, this state, and this nation. In 1972, Tropical Storm Agnes flooded and devastated Wilkesboro and the surrounding area. The efforts of the people in the community to overcome the devastation distinguished this area as the valley with a heart. Congressman Dan Flood and President Richard Nixon provide the leadership and support which enabled the Wyoming Valley to rise again and overcome the damage. One month ago, the storm of the century ravaged the Wyoming Valley. Again, the waters rose to dangerous levels. Our community was flooded and lives were tragically lost. So today, President Clinton, we thank you for displaying the value, valor and leadership that we have come to know and expect. We are reminded of the leadership which King's College was built upon 50 years ago, when Father Connerton from the University of Notre Dame started our school for the Sons of the Valley's Coal Miners. We are honored by your presence at King's College and hope you agree this really is the Valley with a heart. It is now my great honor and privilege to introduce the President of the United States, Bill Clinton. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.
I think, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> I, uh, I want to begin by saying that Patrick Murphy did not have the easiest job in the world today. <clears throat> and that all of his fellow students who stood up and cheered him uh, may have made it a little harder even. <laughs> but he hung in there and he did it very well and he spoke powerfully about this community and his people. And I think we ought to give him another hand. Do you ever notice how there are no cynics in a flood? You know cynics in a tornado? There are never any cynics in a natural disaster. Why? Cynicism is a luxury you cannot afford when you have work to do. And one of the things I want to say to you is that these young people and their enthusiasm today, and those four young people doing their service through AmeriCorps, that's what makes this country great. The spirit of people like this young man, he could have, you know, he could have said, I'm 19 years old. I've got 60, 70 years to live. I like riding my jet ski and winning prizes. Why should I risk my neck putting that jet ski in a raging river? He could have stayed home. And no one would have ever known the difference. No one. <clears throat> that is the way we ought to live every day. It really bothers me when I hear people say, well, they don't believe in our country and we can't make progress and everything's uh, not going to get better and none of these people we put in office are any good. That's a bunch of bull. And it's a lousy excuse for inaction. It's a lousy excuse for inaction. You just remember something. I have one opportunity that none of you can ever have unless you get to be president, and it has nothing to do with me. Whenever I leave the borders of the United States of America and I go to other countries and I see people cheering, they are not cheering for Bill Clinton, they are not even cheering for the president, they are cheering for America. And I cannot possibly convey, I don't have the words to tell you what it feels like to represent all of you and to be the country in the eyes of people from other lands. But I can tell you this, they know we're a pretty great place. John Kennedy said once in the middle of the Cold War that freedom has many difficulties and our country was far from perfect, but we never had to put up a wall to keep our people in. And I want all of you to remember that. I believe that the young people at this college are facing the greatest future, the greatest age of possibility our country has ever known. But every one of us knows that we have enormous challenges. There's a lot of people fulfilling their dreams, but we have to make the American dream available to everybody willing to work for it. There are a lot of people who are doing well, but there are still things that are dividing our people when we ought to be pulling together and being united. And when you are tempted to give up on your country, or to give up on yourself, or to give up on your community, or to give up on some problem you're facing your family. Remember this flood. And remember how people just showed up and did what they were supposed to do. Remember how courage seemed ordinary, and how cynicism was a luxury nobody could afford. And if you can recapture that, then your community, your state, and your nation will have a future that is better than anything that has happened so far. Thank you, and God bless you all.
And it was great. I got to meet Al Compton of ABC News, which was really cool. Uh, I got to meet Governor Ridge. I was in feet of the president, never got to shook, shake his hand. But just to be here amongst all these people, it's great because everybody that's here loves their job. And that's probably one of the greatest things that, that I've seen so far. Great. It was very interesting. I got to see the president close up just as far as you're standing with me. That's where he was. Got to take some pictures. Got to work with Ray. He's a really nice guy, and I hope to keep in contact with him. I'm proud to be a King's student, actually, tomorrow, and I'm also, of course, I'm proud to be a mass comic. I mean, getting all the connections and everything. That was fun. It was a lot of fun. It was a blast. And even though some things didn't go smoothly, it was good. We still had fun. Great. How about our underclassmen here? What are, you, what are your thoughts? I thought it was great. I liked the energy of expecting what was going on, and we froze our buns off today, but <laughs> but it was fun, and I got to shake the president's hand, so it was everything I expected. It was wonderful. Just proud to be uh, invited by the Mass Con Department uh, to be a part of this today. It was a uh, great experience for me. Uh, made me proud to not only be a Mass Comm major, but a King's College student and an American as well. Great. Oh, it was exciting. It was, that was just a lot of fun. It was incredible. Just uh, very interesting, I have to say, you know. They had the lights going, the energy was going. They gave me a badge, I got to dress <laughs> up. I felt just like one of the Secret Service men there. It was great. I'm thrilled. I am, like, so honored to be here now, because he was here. And Got to shake his hand. The whole experience was wonderful. Was a great time. Uh, I'll never forget it. So good. What did think before? And he had a lot of good things to say. Uh, it seems like he cares about the community and he wants to help us. And, uh, and he seemed enthused to be at the college in general. Today was just, it was a great day like, for Kings, um, for, for everyone. I was it, like, when President Clinton was up there. I was just in, in awe. Like, I couldn't explain. It. it was just a great day for Kings and everybody. <laughs> I'm not a mass comm major, but I, I, I did have a good time, and I see what the fresh goes through. I, I really enjoyed seeing it, and I definitely wanted to see the president. It was everything I expected it to be. Super. It was great. It was the best experience so far, I think. I got to shake his hand, so I'm excited. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much for everything. Great job. Thank you. It was a great pleasure. No, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it was worth it. And you have some sympathy when you get a job behind the camera. Exactly. There's no poor stuff like me. I'm the roadblock. I'm like a speedboat. Mass Comm is the only major. We're the only people with the badges. Take a look around. Look at the signs. Mass Comm is the only place to be. Whenever I leave the borders of the United States of America and I go to other countries and I see people cheering, they are not cheering for Bill Clinton, they are not even cheering for the president, they are cheering for America. And I cannot possibly convey, I don't have the words to tell you what it feels like to represent all of you and to be the country in the eyes of people from other lands. But I can tell you this, they know we're a pretty great place. John Kennedy said once in the middle of the Cold War that freedom has many difficulties and our country was far from perfect, but we never had to put up a wall to keep our people in. And I want all of you to remember that.